How far would you go to find a missing family member? Is there anything you wouldn't do, or anywhere you wouldn't go in order to recover a loved one? For many of us, the answer will be a resounding no. We'd do anything for the people close to us. And that's exactly how Sarah Turney felt regarding the disappearance of her older sister, Alyssa, in the year 2001. Over the years, Sarah tried almost every means at her disposal in her quest for answers. She started Facebook and Instagram accounts dedicated to spreading awareness of Alyssa's absence. She started a blog called Justice for Alyssa, which kept track of the ongoing investigations. She reached out to multiple media outlets, both regional and national, actually managing to bag an appearance on Dateline NBC. She started her own podcast, appeared as a guest on other people's, and even attended CrimeCon, the weekend-long event for true crime fans as well as those desperate for leads. She left no stone unturned in her search for justice, but unfortunately, she had no luck in the search for her missing sister. Then, in Sarah's desperation, she turned to TikTok. Sarah later said that she started a TikTok account because she wanted to reach a young audience that hadn't heard about Alyssa's case before. She made sure her video posts included as little of her own speculation and theory as possible, making sure to present only the facts to her new audience. However, she did make it clear that one particular line of inquiry had been almost completely neglected. Her father, Michael Turney, who adopted Alyssa after her mother had died, had never been considered a serious suspect. After announcing she created a TikTok page dedicated to spreading awareness about Alyssa, she also included a word or two about the people who'd had less than positive things to say about it. She made very clear that no matter what anyone said about TikTok or any other medium, if it helped her get closer to answers surrounding Alyssa's disappearance, it would all be worth it. It was all part of her doing the right thing and fighting for justice. To her astonishment, Sarah quickly gained over a million followers on the video app, with each new video post giving her more and more of an audience. In one particular video, Sarah gives a full and frank account of the day her older sister disappeared. At the time, both girls were living with her father, Michael, since their mother, Barbara, had died of cancer. It was her last day of junior year at Paradise Valley High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Sarah who was 12 years old at the time, says she found her sister's usually neat, tidy bedroom looking like it had been struck by a bomb. It was a total mess. The only sign of Alyssa was her Nokia cell phone that was left on the dresser, along with a note saying she'd gone to California to try to make it on her own. In another video, she talked about why exactly she had such a strong hunch that her father was to blame. And needless to say, Michael Turney was much more of a dark personality than he liked to let on. Because seven years after Alyssa first went missing, Phoenix Police Department made a rather worrying discovery of Michael's home whilst on a completely separate investigation. A stash of 26 homemade pipe bombs, three incendiary devices, and two silencers. After he had such volatile equipment confiscated, Michael allowed himself to be interviewed by ABC News, during the interview, he told journalists that he had been planning to take his own life in order to bring attention to Alyssa's case, but added that the bombs found in his home had actually been planted there by police officers attempting to frame him for his daughter's disappearance, which he denied having anything to do with. They have no proof whatsoever of anything other than rumors, innuendos, and lies. There's only two people that can confirm whether I did it, and one is me, and the other is Alyssa. Alyssa's not here, and I'm sitting here, and all I can say until hell freezes over, I didn't do a thing to my daughter. In March of 2010, Michael pleaded guilty to possession of the unregistered pipe bombs and was sentenced to seven years in prison for owning the explosives and all the silencers. Since April of last year, Sarah has been uploading TikToks about her father's alleged role in Alyssa's disappearance. In one particular video that has accrued over 13 million views, she shared home VHS footage from March 29, 1997, four years before Alyssa went missing. In another TikTok, Sarah plays what she claims is a recorded conversation she had with her father a few months after he got out of prison in 2017. The meeting took place at a Starbucks and lasted for over an hour. I felt a lot of different emotions afterwards, Sarah says. I was sad that he still refused to give me any answers. 
I was hoping that putting those statements on TikTok would prompt the police to finally bring him to a grand jury for questioning. In February of 2019, the case was formally submitted to the county attorney's office requesting homicide charges to be made against Michael, but there was no telling if it would actually be taken seriously or not. It would take another six months for the attorney to make a decision. Until then, all anyone could do was wait. Then, to the shock of almost everyone involved in the case, Michael Turney was indicted on charges of murdering his own daughter. Maricopa County attorney Alistair Adele did not elaborate on what exact evidence led to Mr. Turney's arrest, but did confirm that the indictment was issued by a grand jury. She also credited Sarah Turney and her TikToks with having helped solve the case. Sarah Turney, your perseverance and commitment to finding justice for your sister Alyssa is a testament to the love of a sister, and because of that love, Alyssa's light has never gone out and she lives on in the stories and photos you've shared with the community, Adele said. This passion you have, you have demonstrated to her during your journey, is something that will keep Alyssa's memory alive forever. Sarah had said she will continue to make TikTok videos about Alyssa's case until her killer is brought to justice, and whether or not that killer is her own father remains to be seen. Every evening after work, she scans all of her social media accounts on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, plus her blog to see whether anyone has come forward with new information or tips. And then she sits down with the thousands of documents she's acquired that relate to Alyssa's case. I read through approximately 3,000 pages of case documents that were released to the public by the police and gone through a few hundred hours of home footage, video, and interviews that I've conducted with Alyssa's friends and family, she says. And no, I won't ever stop. Sarah and Alyssa's story is truly inspirational. A search for justice fueled by the love between two sisters. It's a reminder that those close to us will never stop fighting in our corner, even after we're long gone. But it's also a reminder that sometimes, it's that those close to us can also be the ones that hurt us the most. Last year, hype over that TikTok app was at its peak, so I foolishly decided to see what the big deal was. Don't get me wrong, some of the surface stuff was pretty cool. All the little dance routines and lip sync videos kept me entertained for a while, but I think I went a little too deep down the rabbit hole because I found just about the creepiest trash I'd ever come across. I'm not even sure how I found this guy. I mean, like I said, I was just tapping and scrolling, going further and further down my TikTok rabbit hole, but somehow, I ended up watching a video of this guy with glasses and a handlebar mustache saying stuff like, Good morning, my queen's above 18. So, as you can imagine, right away I'm all like, What in God's name is this mess? I scroll through his TikToks a little before coming across another video from this guy, The King, where he greets people with queens above 18. First of all, who says stuff like that? But second, the guy was obsessed with the idea of his queens being above 18. Like anyone who talks about it that much is definitely a little sus. But then the video goes on showing him asking all of his queens to do something called the king challenge, which turned out to be nothing more than getting girls to wear a white t-shirt and having them pour water down the front of their shirts. I'm not kidding. That's all the king challenge involved. It was just the creepy way he tried to sound almost fatherly about it too. Like I swear to God at one point, he even said like, try to make it fun, make a little game out of it my queens. Just everything about this guy screamed absolute creep and I was barely surprised when I saw that he'd replied to a comment asking, why have you been talking to my 16 year old girlfriend or something like that. So as you can tell, TikTok is on thin ice already. I'm already kind of jaded with social media in general, purely for the number of creeps that use it, and that's on top of the fact that social media is super bad for your mental health. Like, I don't want anything on my phone that makes me feel terrible or creeps me out. Then, I'm not kidding, like five minutes later, I'm scrolling through some of the less popular dance TikToks when I come across the video that made me go, I'm out. It starts off with this old dude like crouched down, propping his phone against something to record himself. 
So at first, all you see is this dude's wrinkles. Then as the guy steps away from the phone, you see his bare foot with jeans on. Then there's nothing on his upper half, but what I'm guessing was one half of an extra small girl's bathing suit, like the tube top kind. He then starts doing these creepy hand dances while growling completely inaudible words underneath his breath, all in what looked a lot like the basement of a serial killer. All I could think was that his little dance routine might be the last thing I see before he bashes my skull in or something, and this cold shiver just runs right through me. I get that apps like TikTok make people happy and bring people together and all that good stuff, I honestly get that, but to me, social media has always been this glimpse into how petty, immature, and downright frightening human beings can sometimes be. So yeah, TikTok, it's going to be a no from me, dog. A seriously bizarre and terrifying phenomenon had TikTok users all over the English-speaking world freaking out last month, when the app's translation feature began to make some deeply frightening errors. By some bizarre happenstance, a user discovered that if you write a comment with re 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 in it, something rather unexpected occurred. The comment itself could be any variation of those letters, but the presence of R-I-R-I-R-I or re 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 would cause the translation service to perform a distinctly different function. A young woman with the username Wo Nelly shared the disturbing news with her fellow TikTokers in early January, and since then, her video has been viewed almost 9 million times. Naturally, many who watched the video decided to try the phenomenon out for themselves with the occasionally horrifying result. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen on TikTok, Nelly told her followers. If you comment re re re, it says something really cryptic, some really scary stuff. Why is no one talking about this? It's so scary. For those that don't know, it was possible for everyone who watched her video to instantly test out the veracity of her claims in the comments box below her post. Then if they held their thumbs down on the comments, a little window popped up, asking if they wished to have their comments translated. Hundreds wrote out their own variation of the gibberish phrase, then shared the translations, along with their shock and horror at what they said. This is the second most important part, one translation read. The cry for help. It's a dream. Another said, Crying? That's a lot of fun. It's alright, it's a cry for help. Suffering, 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 suffering. While another user complained that the frightening translation didn't seem random at all, and apparently been a little too much for her. Pain, pain, tears and pain. All I can do is cry. I had to leave and it hurts, her translation said. And given that she had recently lost a grandparent to cancer, she found the message's relevance to be truly haunting. Most users who worked through the comments section, translating the vast array of comments on their own, were understandably and justifiably creeped out at what they were seeing. The basic translation error was one thing, but getting such elaborately disturbing and sometimes prophetic messages was something else entirely. Some users said their messages verged on being poetic, while others professed their deep fear and confusion. Oh my god, I'm translating people's comments and I'm actually spooked. One user wrote after allegedly translating one message into, Help, help, suffering, crying in a nightmare. Another user then added in, does anyone else feel like the owners of TikTok are being held captive? No? Okay. User Wo Nelly went on to share some of the scarier translations in a follow-up video that had many TikTok users glued to their phones in fearful curiosity. This is the second most important part of the history of the world. It's alright. Was one of the worst comments she read, which sounds a little too on the nose considering the wildfires, wars, and worldwide viral panic of the previous year. Are you joking me? Like all of them are scary but this one? Nelly said. That makes too much sense. I hate it. I hate it so much. While some were fixated on their fears that TikTok had somehow been cursed or that the messages were ominous prophecies, there may actually be a completely rational explanation for the whole thing. Many TikTok users noticed that the app seemed to be translating the re 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 messages to Maori an Eastern Polynesian language spoken by the Maori people, who are the indigenous peoples of New Zealand. It translates the Maori, 
Zosa or Shona. If he translates enough, it repeats, one person commented, because Riri all relate to expressions of anger in Maori. It was a language spoke in Maori, someone else commented. Riri refers to expression with anger, wrath, and annoyance. So I'm guessing it says something random, pending on what you put. That theory might sound like it makes sense. But how does it account for the wildly different phrases people got back when they translated their Riri message? We can say it was merely a glitch, and certainly stranger things have happened on the internet. But perhaps there was something else at work with the haunting translations. Something deep in the coding. A ghost in the machine, you might say. Maybe we've been talking to computers for so long that they finally decided to talk back. Only what they have to say is far more disturbing than we could have possibly imagined.